Okay, this is chapter six um, this week. This is um, jumping into our um, Families Without Fathers textbook. Again, this is a harder book to read than your um, Think uh, textbook. It's um, It has lots and lots of details in it. And um, this chapter six is kind of a, this is a brief little PowerPoint here. Um, I really wanted to point out some things to pay attention to as you read this this chapter, this chapter is about the essential father. And um, he really wants to give you a little bit of history. Um, there's a lot of content in this chapter about uh, evolution. And I'm not, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to that part of the chapter. I'm not as interested in that. Um, so let me point out to you here in a couple of slides what I think is important in this chapter um, to pay attention to. Um, uh, in the chapter, um, probably about half of the chapter is, is worth looking at and seeing and pulling out some research in it um, to help us understand why uh, Popno thinks that fathers are really essential and you really can't replace them with somebody else, you know, a friend or an uncle or um, some other character uh, in your family. So, you know, look at here at this, this first slide here um, in the section of the, of the chapter about human evolution of fatherhood. Um, um, you know, mating, reproduction, parenting, they're all essential parts of the process of survival. The point being that human beings, and, and you know, you probably, if you think about this, you know this, but human beings, you know, we don't have instincts uh, internalized inside of us so that we could survive on our own. Um, you can't take a human being and um, right out of the hospital and go put it in a jungle and hope that it survives. Uh, humans can't do that. There's some animal species that can do that because they have instincts. Well, humans don't. So humans have to have other human beings to literally physically help them survive. You've got to hold a baby. You have to feed a baby. Um, you have to change the baby's diapers. You have to take care of a baby and, and make sure that it's warm, make sure that it's um, completely physically taken care of. But then you also have to teach a baby and a toddler. You have to teach a baby and show a baby. You have to teach them the language and show a baby right from wrong because they don't know that. So not only do you have to have other human beings um, taking physical care of a baby, but then you have to have other human beings to internalize into other human beings um, uh, how to survive, teach them how to survive. So it's just biological process of survival it's a social process of survival so um, we call this and here's your term that you want to go look up and make sure that you understand we call this inclusive fitness it's kind of a biological term um, human beings aren't just breeding offspring like cattle do or uh, you know, other animals do you know your dog or your cat human beings are raising other human beings so that they can survive. So we have to raise humans. Um, you, your cat has cats, has kittens, and turns them loose. And they just have instincts and they just make it. Well, humans can't do that. We call this inclusive fitness. And so he's using this at the beginning of the chapter to explain to you why fathers are very important parts, if not essential parts, essential parts of this raising of children. And, and for some reason, right now, here we are in 2020, uh, we tend to believe that fathers are not important anymore and that we can raise children without both sets of parents. And um, I don't think that's true. And your uh, author of the textbook here, David Pogno, he doesn't think that's true either. He's been showing you some research to indicate that that's not really true, that kids are falling apart and our civilization is falling apart simply because for a lot of reasons, and one of the reasons is fatherlessness. And so look at this chapter and see if you can figure out some uh, of the reasons why he thinks fatherhood is essential. Okay, here's the fatherhood problem. Here's the problem that we're experiencing. And so here's some terms. Um, 
the sexual strategies he's going to explain to you in the chapter about uh, the male sex drive and the fragility of pair bonding. Males um, have to be socialized and have to be trained and kind of have to be forced into parenthood. And if you will turn them loose and if you don't force them into that, into parenthood, uh, males will just have sex with anybody and continue to have sex without being forced into, be, without being civilized into parenthood. And so it's almost not natural for males to do that. Uh, we have to force males to be civilized. And so women tend to do that. And when women don't act civilized, uh, when women allow males to impregnate them and turn, turn, turn themselves loose and run off, uh, we turn into a, a population of barbarians. Uh, here's another term for you, paternity confidence. So when males know that child is mine and he has paternity confidence, then what that ends up doing is it produces a stronger investment in the offspring. Uh, the lower the paternity confidence, then the lower the investment he has in his offspring. And so when you have males and females having random uh, sex, having um, uh, uh, sex that's not within the bounds of marriage, um, having um, uh, hooking up and having casual sex, then what ends up you end up producing is you end up producing very low levels of paternity confidence, and it produces very uh, weak investment in offspring. And so you end up producing offspring who don't have a father invested in them. And so you saw in the previous chapter, what does that produce? It produces um, children, especially males, who have a weak future. And so paternity confidence uh, is, the, is, is what is produced uh, from having um, marriage, having sex within the boundaries of marriage. Having casual sex uh, is a disaster. Um, um, look at number one was about sexual strategies in general. Male sexual strategies, um, when you have, um, when you can get males to engage in monogamous pair bonding. In other words, um, I'm going to have sex, but I'm only going to have sex with you, and we're going to do it within the boundaries of a marriage then the trade-off is you have paternity confidence. And the trade-off is you have children who are your children and children that you can invest in. And you can invest your life in and you can invest your economic wherewithal in those children because you know those are your children. So these are some terms here um, that uh, you're not going to get in other uh, social science uh, terms. They're, they're kind of biological um, terms. Uh, I, I urge you to look these up and um, put them down in your vocabulary, sexual strategies, male sexual strategies, and paternity confidence. Um, it's, it's very interesting. I think it will do you well uh, in the future to kind of understand uh, how marriage works and how um, human pair bonding works. Um, and this is what produces the fatherhood problem uh, way back when, um, because Genetically, uh, evolutionary-wise, um, males are not, evolutionary scientists don't believe males are wired uh, to get uh, nailed down into a family. And so what we have to do is we have to figure out a way to civilize males. And so this was a way to do that. So this is a very interesting section in the chapter. And finally, um, how did fatherhood evolve? How do we end up getting fathers nailed down and committed to families? How do we get them civilized? Well, you know, women are the bearers of civilization. Uh, I believe women are the bearers of civilization because they have to make sure that their children are protected. They have to make sure that their children are taken care of because women are the, are the ones who bear children and have to raise children. And so look at the history of this. In civil, look at the history of civilization that he presents to you in this chapter. Um, and look at how... Um, the, the, the contrast between pre-modern civilization and today and how fatherhood um, uh, has increased as the um, as children has aged have aged how the role of fatherhood has become more and more important as children get older uh, and, and children excuse me as fathers need to have a more hands-on approach 
um, to the lives of their children as they get older, as children get older, as they can learn how to read and write and get more involved in their education. And as modern society comes along and pre-modern society, as education gets more and more complicated, the role of father gets more complicated and becomes more essential in their lives. So what are those implications for today? Um, uh, look up these terms in the chapter. Switch roles, lower paternity confidence, and care for the children of others. Um, those are important implications um, for today. Um, what kinds of roles do fathers and mothers have? How do they switch those roles? Um, uh, because um, both parents are breadwinners now. Um, you don't necessarily have a unique role that only fathers are doing. They're not out hunting and gathering and, and mothers are not home uh, making bread and doing the laundry. Your, your mothers and fathers are, are both going to work. Their, their roles are kind of switched roles. So what is it um, that fathers are doing today that's unique? Um, this is what's led us to believe that fathers are replaceable. Uh, it's hard for us to think about what is it that fathers do? What is it that they bring to the table that only fathers can bring to the table? Um, what is it? What kinds of practices are we engaged in now, like um, casual sex, that lowers paternity confidence and thereby lowers the investment of fathers in families? Um, and then how are we? How do we have fathers, i.e., stepfathers, who are engaged in caring for the children of other people? And so remember, I've shown you statistics about um, the numbers. Look at your think chapter um, divorce how many fathers are taken care of and responsible for, in their home, responsible for the children of other fathers. And so how much investment, how much um, psychological investment are they really uh, making day in and day out for those kids? Uh, because they know they don't have um, paternity. They, they know they're not the uh, fathers of those kids. And so think about what that means. Um, those are some interesting things to think about in this chapter. But again, in this chapter, about half of it, which is about uh, evolution, um, it's interesting, but I don't think it's really relevant to what we're trying to study when we study families and how families work and how fathers are essential to families. So um, kind of skim through that and pay more attention to these topics that I brought up in these three slides here. Um, again, if you have a question about something or something seems confusing, always send me an email. And let's see what you can connect with in um, your online session and in your um, discussion this week. Um, send me an email if you've got a question about something, and I'll talk to you again soon.